And let me share my screen. And and by the way, you all can stop your video if you uh, your your camera if you need to. We're fine there. Can everybody see my red screen here? Yep. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Here we go. Hey everybody, welcome to the kickoff for our Shift Book Club and the Pivot community. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Jay Papazan. I'm VP of Learning at Keller Williams, and I'm joined by James Shaw and Tampa. James, tell us a little bit about yourself before we kick this off. All right, Jay, thank you. Happy to be here. My name is James Shaw. I'm a coach here at Keller Williams. I also am KW International Master Faculty and been in this company 15 years and sat in just about every seat, including a team leader for seven years. And I'm excited to be with you, Jay. This is an important conversation we're going to have today. I agree. I'm going to pause it for just a second. Can you guys hear okay? It could be a little bit yeah. louder. Okay, I think it's about, let me just double check. That might it's be coming across, it's coming across there. fine, but a little louder would be great. I, I don't think I can do a little bit louder. So let You're me see fine, if I can get the microphone closer to the speaker here. Might be about as good as I can get, guys. So you might want to turn up your volume as well. Okay. Yeah, they were talking a little quietly. I wonder. Yeah, that's about as good as I can go. All right, so just listen tight, okay? Yeah, and I just want to thank you publicly. Um, for those of you, if you look at the URL on this Facebook group, it says Shift Daily. Um, James had already leapt into action and was doing a daily dose of this book, and he agreed to partner with us. So thank you again for partnering with us so that we can really blow this out and share this book with the whole industry. Oh my goodness, it's my pleasure. Thank you oh. for writing it, and Gary and Dave, because without you guys writing the book, we wouldn't have the guide to follow right now at a time that our whole industry needs it, uh, you know, in a bigger time than they have in a long time. There you go. Thank you. Um, and if Dave's watching, hats off to you too. Maybe Gary's watching. We'll see. Um, real quick, the ground rules are posted in the group. And be positive. Stay in curiosity. Um, stay out of politics and news feeds. No promotions, no recruiting. And in particular, um, when it comes to these broadcasts, um, James and I are not your broker. We're not your CPA. We're not your attorney. We're not your physician. Um, we're not your therapist, but we may give it our best shot to try to reassure you and give you what you need to get through this. Just being really clear, we're trying to share our best ideas, um, but we all have to do our own due diligence before we put those into action. Anything that you would add to that on the ground rules, James? No, I would just say the one thing to remember, every state is doing different stuff, and this is not the space to go for advice on that. You get your market center leadership or whoever's leading your office can help you best on how you can still win in this market. There you go. So um, throughout this, if you're in the Facebook group, use the comments to ask questions. We have staff that is monitoring that, that'll share those with James and I. Um, I would ask you to type the word question, maybe in all caps, so that the team can really quickly scan through the comments, see that you have a question for us and serve it up. James and I will try to save some time at the end of this to make sure that we're answering your questions. If we don't get to your questions, we will go into the group after this and answer as many as we can. Um, and just in the interest of everyone, right, doing uh, what we need to do and staying focused, if your, your question doesn't get answered, look up in the comments. Look up. Chances are we answer one just like it, and instead of copying and pasting it, we're going to answer that question one time. Just search upwards until you find it. Um, but with that said, um, let's kick this off. Let's get some perspective, maybe. Yeah, I, I think you're right. And, and one thing, Jay, is this is not new. Shifts happen all the time. That's how you and Gary open the book. That, I mean, these things happen and we should plan for them. Well, uh, hopefully you've got the book. If you don't, you know what? We'll give you everything you need in these sessions um, to go take action. Um, the book is great to get Gary's voice in your head. But he started in the business in 79. Within a few months, interest rates skyrocketed up to 18%. And he was brand new to the business, so he just thought people had to pay 10 or 12 points to sell a house. And he just went and took action and did okay through that. But he's been through, I was chatting with him on Monday, um, he went through the crisis of the mid-80s in Texas, the savings and uh, loan boom, or bust rather, the recession of the 90s, the dot-com bubble, the 2008 recession. 
We've been through these. There is a proven playbook for how you adjust your business and your mindset. Um, that's what this book is about. Um, how you not only survive these times, but come out and actually thrive as a business person. And that's what our job is today. We're going to try to share as much of that with you as you can. Um, just a little perspective on what a, a shift is, right? We all know an economic shift is going to hit our markets. Um, we're all preparing for it. That's why you're on this call. Um, when we looked up at the last one, um, most people call it the Great Recession of 2008 or 2009. The reality is, because we work with some of the best realtors in the world, we actually saw that in the fall of 2005. If you were paying attention, um, our top agents in the country started saying, you know, showings have dropped off a cliff. And the nature of that recession, remember, there was a real estate bubble. Prices had gone up and up. Affordability was a problem. And at a certain point, buyers just said no more. And then there was a, a, a long collapse in terms of the mortgage-backed securities and all of that other crazy stuff. And what we saw in that is just kind of the nature of a shift. Things happen really slowly until they happen fast. And it always catches you by surprise. So we're in that phase right now. It's happened. It feels like it's happened to us. And that opportunity today is to talk about how we mentally adjust and how we get our actions straight. Yeah, I, and you're so right. And the, the, I mean, mental is the first piece of it. And to remember that, that, that we do have the model on, on how to handle it. And if your mindset, though, Jay, isn't where you think it should be or isn't where it should be, you won't succeed. So it's a, it's a matter of getting that first. And, and you and I were talking earlier that, um, you know, really we get a little bit confused because when the market's really, really good, well, that means a lot of people want to get in the market, right? And when the market changes, well, they don't always get out right away. You call you and Gary call it the law of equilibrium in the book. Can you walk us through that a little bit? If you, yes. And if you go back through time and that's kind of the opportunity that, that shows up and it's a, it's one of the ways that we can look at what's happening and have a long-term view that maybe see that there's maybe a silver lining for those of us who, who do the right things today. So in the last big economic shift, um, the actual height of the market was in 2005. I'm going to look at my notes. We sold about 6.3 million homes that year. And what was funny is that realtors kept getting into the business even after home sales went down by almost a million that next year. Right? I think it was like 600,000 less home sales and then the next year. But it wasn't until 2006 that we peaked at 1.3 million realtors. So the market shifted and people were still rushing into the industry because they didn't see that the, the opportunity was maybe shrinking. And then for those that were weathered that storm, right, who got their heads on right, did the right things, you look, the, the lowest point was in 2010. We had about 4.3 million sales. So first off here, it didn't go to zero, right? It didn't go to zero. And the worst month, I looked at the month-to-month -month data, the annual sales rate dropped to about a 3.5 million pace. So that we dropped to a pace of 3.5 million, which is about 50% of the, the height of the market. So off, yes, way off, absolutely, but not zero. And what's interesting is that the low point in terms of the number of agents chasing for that business didn't actually happen until 2012. So here we are, the market actually turned in 2005. It actually hits its bottom in 2010. But in terms of how many people were competing for that limited market share, we didn't actually find that bottom until two more years later at 999,000 realtors in 2012. Now, here's the cool thing. If you do the division, right, this is the law of equilibrium. At the height of the market, the average number of transactions available to the average realtor was actually kind of low. At the worst possible moment, it actually was about 50% higher. So when you look up, the opportunity we have is to prepare ourselves for this, to do the right things. And if we can weather this storm, on the other side, some of the people who are maybe not career realtors, they're not here for a whole career. Maybe they just had a side job. Maybe they weren't in it full time. They're not like you. You're here because you're committed. The people who are committed to a great career, on the other side of this, you're going to have the opportunity to have more market share to help even more people buy and sell homes. Yeah, and I think the message is not, you know, hey, is your opportunity at risk? No, what we're saying is you have opportunity, go out and get it. And 
And one thing I've always thought about a shift is, is this, that, that to the individual agent, if I just took, you know, agent A in, in a certain community, the state of the market is actually irrelevant to their own opportunity. Right. But they can go out and get theirs. You and Gary have said, go get your unfair share, right? It's an opportunity. And, and, and I'll, let's use Tampa Bay as an example where I live. Jay, if we went to a thousand transactions in a year, that would be a horrible market, right? That would be bad, 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 bad. And, and yet if, if, you know, an agent went and got 350 of those thousand, they had a great year. So there's massive opportunity in front of us. You and Gary say that a ton in the book that a shift is an opportunity. And so I think we tell this to you so that you don't freak out because what, what I'm seeing happen, and Jay, I'm sure you're getting the calls at KWRI, that some people are scared. They're nervous about what's going to happen. And we've got to go relax. We've done it before. And there is opportunity here, right? Absolutely. And I just want to acknowledge, we're all scared. I think everybody is frightened. And what you have to do is acknowledge your fear, um, give it a name, right? OK, this is an economic shift. We know what that looks like. And even though each economic shift that we've been through, I named like five that Gary's lived through, were unique in nature a lot of things tend to play out the same. And so there is a game plan that we can move to. So it's okay to be frightened. What we can't do is be paralyzed by that. We have to take care of our clients. We have to take care of our families. And that means we have to step forward into action. Um, one thing that I just like, well, we can take a look at when we think about this, this idea of the opportunity. You said if it dropped to a thousand in Tampa, like there was still an opportunity, like, some big team could still take a, a, mar a big market share of that 350. I mean, I think some people on this call would be happy to have one a month from that, right? Yeah. But it's about build a fortress around your business, right? That's going to be one of the themes of today's talk. Build a fortress around it. And when we say your business, what are we talking about, James? I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, no, we're talking about our database and our people. I mean, at the end of the day, we've got, we've got to talk to our people. But if, if you look at it, every single one of you watching this call, mm -hmm has a unique database that's owned by you, it's exclusive to you, and nobody can take it from you unless you don't talk to them. And, and that, Jay, that's been the big thing we've talked about in the last week and a half is really, talk, that's your opportunity, is talking to your people and keeping your relationship moving with them. And, and that is one of the opportunities. And, and you guys say that, that um, we, we're making choices in this, right? That in the book, you outline 12 tactics and you say, we're gonna make choices every day and one of those choices we have to make we don't have to one of the choices we can make is to talk to our people and stay in relationship with them because if if we're nervous about what's going on uh they are too they might be nervous about their job or what's happening with them and we can be a voice to help them. yeah we can be a voice of reason i think a lot of people right now they're home with their kids um, they're home with their spouse. They're having to find new ways to do their jobs, just like we are. Um, maybe they've got MSNBC on in the background 24 hours a day, right? And yeah, we'll turn that off. What? It that? doesn't matter. Sorry to interrupt. Just turn it off. It doesn't matter which one it is, by the way, whether it's the CNN, the Fox News, or the MS, turn it off yeah. because it's not helping you. And that's why you guys say mindset's so important. We don't need that stuff. That's right. It's scaring people to death, our clients and us, right? We have to stay informed so we can be the, the economist, the local economist of choice for our clients. We can help keep them informed. And when we reach out at times like this, they really need to hear from us. Um, I was sharing with you, James, before this, that yesterday, my wife went through, I think, three letters of, letters of the alphabet, just texting people. And, and the script, right, the sales script was, how are you doing? Things are really crazy right now. Is there anything I can do to help you? And she just went through hundreds of folks in her database in just a space of hours, and her phone was blowing up all day because that was what they needed to hear, that someone's thinking about them, someone cares about them, and we're here to help. Uh, Wendy's a genius. You already know that. And, and that's exactly the script, I think, in my opinion. In fact, that's what we've talked about in this group now for a week, is call your people and say, how are you doing? And, and then they'll tell you. And, and then ask, and is there, what can I do? What do you need? How can I help you? And, you know, when you say be the local economist of choice, that might mean you know what's going on in your community and what the government's telling. It also may mean that you know where they have paper towels. And, and we had a guy this morning who said he's called his database 
and he's asking that question. His name, the, the agent's name is Chris. He says, I'm asking, how are you doing? And he said, I could hear in this woman's voice that something was bothering her. He just said, hey, tell me the truth. What's going on? And she said, I, I, I just, I'm nervous. I don't know what to do. And quite frankly, all I want to do right now is go buy paper towels. And he said, why don't you check out like an office supply store? Because they probably have that and quit going to the grocery. Oh my gosh, that's so great. And then literally 30 seconds later, she says, and I have an investment property that I would like to unload in April. <laughs> so that's running into opportunity, Jay. And that's what you talk about. We've got to have a mindset about it. You say in the book, page 24, that success is never about the chosen few. It's about the few who choose. Isn't that what you're saying here? That's when people ask me to sign their book. That's almost always what I write. That's one of my favorite quotes in the book because it tells us and reminds us, thank you, Gary, that we have agency, right? It's not about someone getting chosen to survive this. It's going to be the people who choose to do the right things. So we have agency. We do have control even when it doesn't feel like it. Well, and that's why we have a question that says, you know, 10 years ago, we could still sell houses, host open houses, visit sellers, because there's no lockdown, not today. And, and how will this differ? I think, Jay, this is a thought I had. We are fortunate that we're experiencing this particular situation in 2020 and not in 2000, because the technology exists now for us to still have open houses, to still have listing appointments, to still work with buyers. And you told me again, your genius wife, Wendy, had this amazing like digital open house that worked. So that stuff is still an opportunity. Yeah, we did it for the first time, right? We're in the same place. We're in a, now um, going to be officially shelter in place here in Austin, Texas. And we're still, everyone's still interpreting what those rules mean. What can you do? What's essential? What's not essential? But on Sunday, we had a vacant property from one of our builders, Fortunate Foundations. We did a 30, it took us 30 minutes. We did a 30 minute virtual walkthrough. We had 30 people join us live. And that's not bad for an open house, right? 30 people? That's a person a minute, Jay. I mean, 30 people in 30 minutes, we take that all day. Yeah, and then the thing that shocked us, we looked that night and 1,300 people had taken a look and actually was overhearing them like it, with this new order in place. You know, they were coming up with a strategy. How do we coach our sellers to do a walkthrough of their house so that we keep everything within the rules and everyone's safe? So we will have to use our creativity to get through this, um, but sometimes we might surprise ourselves, and some of the things that we thought were the reasons we were successful in the past were actually maybe holding us back. Some of the things that we try out of necessity may actually be more effective. Well, I think on the flip side of this, there will be changes in our industry that will benefit long term. One of them is I, I, if we can get great at a digital listing appointment, then our efficiency goes way up, right? Because we're saving time in and out. There's all sorts of stuff. And that's why I think mindset matters. And you and Gary say in the book that you have three types of people that can show up in a shift, the overly pessimistic, the overly optimistic, and then the resourcefully realistic. And I'm just curious if you could kind of walk people through that. Well, I can tell you, um, there's an old book. Is Edward de Bono wrote a book called The Six Thinking Hats. And that language kind of permeated. Um, I joined Keller Williams, our company, in 2000 for book publishing. I didn't know anything about real estate. But we all talked about that book, and I'm a black hatter. And that means I naturally see how things fail first, right? So I may be one of those people that leads negative. So I think what we all want to do now is acknowledge maybe where we naturally come from and migrate towards that middle. We want to be the reasonable and, and, and rational person right now. If we're overly optimistic, we might be not doing things that we should be doing. If we're overly pessimistic, we might not be doing things because we just assume they fail. So being resourceful now is more valuable than ever. And I just gotta say, James, like I, I came from publishing. I got to see my wife go from marketing to real estate. The natural kind of characteristic I think of for a small business entrepreneur is they're all incredibly resourceful. So we just have to find that place in us that we know we have or we wouldn't be in this business. We do it for our, our clients all the time. We find a way. We have to do that for ourselves now. Well, and somebody is going to find a way. So it might as well be you finding the way and figuring stuff out. And I think when we get our mindset figured out first, we're going to be good. 
you guys say on page 25, there's always enough business for you to survive with a minimum income while striving for the maximum. So keep your perspective. Yes. And you and Gary go in and say, don't, and Gary said this on Monday, he said, you might make less money this year. And yet that's not a judgment about you as an agent, right? No, no. It's a reflection of the market we're operating in. Um, I think we have to divorce ourselves from some of the, I mean, we have an industry that's very much about plaques, right? And production numbers. And right now it's about, can we take care of our clients and can we take care of our people and provide for our families? We have to dig in and focus on the essentials right now. Yeah, which is helping our people. And, and Linda McKissick, who's, you know, a legend in Keller Williams, said on a call last week that we're going for mind share over market share right now, that we just want to be there for our people. You talked about the importance of database. That's so, right. Okay, so we get our, our mindset figured out, and let's say we think we're good there. I mean, we've got to also do something. That's right. The moment we kind of figure out what we should do, we've got to leap into action. And even though in the book we talk about mistakes are, are, are things we really wanted to avoid, right? Um, we certainly don't want to mess up in um, our closing procedures, right? We want to bulletproof those transactions like we talk about in 12, uh, tactic 12. I do think right now, as we all are pivoting to brand new ways of business, I just also want to give everybody permission. If you're doing your first virtual buyer consultation, your first virtual listing appointment, if you're doing accountability with your team for the first time, give yourself some grace. We are all going to mess up on this journey. Um, it's going to take some practice. And what's wonderful about this extraordinary time is that people are going to be patient with us. They're going to give us a little grace too because you found a way to do something. You found a way to provide the service and you can say, hey, this is my first virtual listing. Let's go. Let's do it. And we just kind of embrace that and dive right into it. Uh, it's so smart. And Jay, with permission, I'm, I'm actually going to leave the chapter in. And I just want to tell people about one page that references what you talked about, which is 68 and 69. And I know you have the book memorized, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> and that is, here's what you said. We're going we're gonna to make mistakes in this, and we're learning as we go. It's important to understand our behavioral style. And what you guys talk about here is that if there is a case of, of a, a study and practice and take action, that, that we want to find a solution, maybe practice that, and then take action. Where some people can put their head down and I'm just going to get to work and figure it out, and that might not actually be very good. Like you guys say, hit the pause button and maybe practice something, slow down. And other people want to figure everything out before they take any action. So I think it's relevant to what you said. Can you comment on that, that study, um, practice, and then take action? Yeah, I think, like, let's not be reckless, right? It is ready, aim, then fire. But we also don't want to get, you know, mired in the mud of our thinking and, and, and making things perfect when they don't really don't need to be. So do we have our strategy right? Are we doing the right things? I really think about the Drucker quote. Um, it's better to be effective um, than be efficient, right, by themselves. Um, if we can just be effective, that's awesome. If later we can start getting better and be efficient and effective, that's, that's amazing. We want to do that. So study it. Ask the question. We're in this amazing group. There are people in this group that will have answers to your questions. If it's not coming from us, it'll come from the community. We can find out what we need to do. We can practice. I'll tell you. This setup, I had to go steal some art from the office yesterday. We propped up a, a plant on a box so that we'd have something in the background. I had to rewire my office because we had to do a practice run rest last night because I was terrified. We'd be right in the middle of our first book club and like my camera would fall off of the plastic tape that's mounting it to the, you know, the, the monitor. Yeah. But we practice so that we can at least hit a minimum level and be professional about it. I mean, if you think this looks good, wait till Thursday. Okay, I mean, put <laughs> the setup on Thursday is going to be amazing. Okay, I think you're right. We're learning as we go. All right, so here's the deal. And we you know, know what you guys, mentioned. We get I'm, our mindset right. Go ahead. I'm going to, you're the coach. You're the one who's got this memorized. And I'm always in awe when I talk to people like you and Tony Pacello, and you're quoting our books like number and page because you use them every day as tools. When I turn to that page, what it made me think of is one of Gary's very first scripts as a new agent back in 19. 90, 1979, the definition of a professional. Mm -hmm. A professional is someone who knows what they know, knows what they don't know, and knows the difference. 
And what we can all do in this time is memorize that little script, right? And just say, James, I wish I had an answer for you, but I don't. But I am a part of fill in the blank, your brokerage, your market center, this community. But I do have access to some of the best minds in our industry. Can I get back to you with a great answer instead of just what I have now? Right? We as professionals can ask permission to circle back. We don't have to know everything right now. Yeah, you're right. And he says, if I know, I'll tell you. And if I don't know, I'll go find out. And I, I think that's so huge. Um, all right. We get our mindset in the right spot, Jay. And then the thing I find as a coach, too, as I'm working with people, is eventually we do have to take action. Now, I'm, I'm 90 minutes from Magic Kingdom's parking lot, which is closed by now, which is sad. And, and they got construction there. I'm sure you've been to Disney World and Disneyland. And when they have construction, they put up these quotes from Walt Disney. And one of my favorite quotes from him is, the way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. And you and Gary say basically the same thing. He says, once you know, it's not about more knowing, it's about doing. Like we, we, we actually have to get to work and be focused on the right things. That's right. What must be done right and what must, must be done right now? Those are the questions that we have to get to really quickly so that we can get our unfair share. You talked about the, the caterer, right? There are people that are doing the activities and because they're getting there first, they are going to be the ones that find maybe that cash buyer, that cash investor, that we don't have to worry about some of the other issues around closing. Those people are out there, but we have to take action to take advantage of those. So I'm going to tell the catering story because I told that one to you offline. So I want the people to hear what we're talking about. And that was a coach I was talking with whose husband works in catering. And when all this happens, right, we've heard everything shutting down. People are canceling events. And, and so he had lost this catering opportunity and, and didn't have any stuff on the books. So he picks up the phone and he starts calling people and asking the question, Jay, right? How are you doing? How are you? Is there anything new to help you? And one person says, actually, I'm so glad you called. We need to feed all these medical professionals who are working around the clock. Can you help with that? And, and I don't know that I have the numbers exactly right. I think he's up to doing 100 meals a day, and it could grow to as big as 1,000. Well, that's going and getting your unfair share because he got into action. That's right. And th that industry is one of the hardest hit. But because he took action, he got one of the few opportunities there, and he's going to be able to provide for his partners and his employees. I love that story. And that's exactly what we should be doing. Well, and I'm hearing them. I know you're hearing them, too, of people going, hey, I'm still listing a house. They do a virtual uh, listing or a digital listing appointment. They get it on the market in a day, and they're getting multiple offers still. I mean, the business has not closed completely. Well, one thing that's unique, like we're taking this very seriously, and everybody should, um, so we don't know what it will be like in 30 or 40 days, but we do know what it's like right now. And what we have had for years is an undersupply in almost every market that we look at. There are not enough homes for sale to match the demand. And so um, I was chatting with some friends in Seattle, right? And it was one of the, the early epicenters of what's happening. And even though demand had dropped off, they were still getting as many as 30 multiple offers, right? Because yes, there's not a whole lot of new supply, but even with half the demand, there's still an imbalance. And there still was this sense of it being, at least for now, a seller's market. So there still was opportunity out there. That could change, but right now it's still there. There is demand. I think about the first time home buyers. They've been shut out of the market. They're looking up, investors, they're asking, maybe this is my chance to get back in. Yeah, I, I think you're right. And I, the, the inventory may tighten. You know, there may be people who say, let's wait this out. So inventory could shrink even more. And the buyers who aren't looking are extremely serious people. So that's why we gotta stay in touch with them. And, and someone says, well, how do we do a virtual listing appointment? And Jay, my advice would be, the same way you've done a traditional listing appointment, except this time you're each behind a camera. That's right. Yeah. They can be on their phone. They don't have to have a fancy setup. You can too. Yeah, I think you're right. This is good. Um, you guys say you have to be focused on the right task and execute them well. And, um, and those right tasks, I guess, are lead gen and lead conversion, the, the story doesn't change, right? No, it doesn't. And there's a lot of reasons that we want people to go there first, right? The lead gen is we've got to reach out to our, our build a fortress around our database. That is your business, your database, those relationships, those people who know, like, and trust you, that want to do business with you more than anyone else. You want to be there first. We all have been the realtor 
who had a sign from their competitor go up in their neighbor's yard. And we're kicking ourselves because we just didn't have that conversation. Now is not the time for that. We need to be reaching out proactive and we need to be at the front lines of conversion. If you had hired ISAs, if you were letting your buyer's agents do that before, you need to get back in there and do it as well because it has a lot of gifts, right? What are some of the gifts that agents get when they get back in this? Well, they find what's working and they figure out what's not working. I mean, I think that if you look at the last time we went through this, so many top agents had turned over some of the lead generation machine mm -hmm. that when they took it back, here, here's the deal. The Rainmakers, the Rainmaker, because they're probably one of the best lead generators, probably the best lead generator on, in the organization. Their picture is the one that's on the sign. They have the most at risk. And, and you say this so clearly, and I love page 27 in the book, where you say the two actions that real estate agents take personal ownership of are lead generation and lead conversion. Nothing becomes more critical to success than finding these motivated buyers and sellers and closing them to an appointment. And you go on and say, no one on your team will be as talented or invested in closing leads to appointments. And your direct participation allows you to set the standard and coach the team on how they can meet it. So we've got to get back in the game if we've gotten out of it. And if we're in the game, we probably have to double what we've been doing. That's right. And, and for those that are reading your book along, that paragraph on the bottom of 27 that uh, James was just quoting from, I've got most of that underlined. Because that's really, really good stuff to, to look at. Some of the things that you're going to find out, right, if you work on a team, if you have team members, you're going to hear firsthand the objections that your buyers and sellers have. Well, I don't want to show my home right now, or what could I do about listings, or what can it, and you have those answers, and you'll understand really quickly how you can handle them. You'll also know, like, a lot of leads won't go through anymore, but you'll know because you're the best converter on the team what the actual expectation should be, and you can not only coach the people on your team, but you can hold them to a standard that's actually achievable. Well, and I know they'll talk about this in the lead gen chapter. Since we're going remote, let's all get on Zoom as an organization, so everyone's lead generating, and then the Rainmaker can even jump in and, and coach right there live, which you probably weren't doing in your in your space, right? And, and that's where you guys go to uh, on page 28, and you say, business analysts have often pointed out that the seeds of failure are, are sown during times of success, and the most humbling lesson of this shift is this, we succeed in good times not only because of what we do right, but in spite of what we do wrong. Some of our mistakes are gonna get exposed right now, Jay. Oh yeah, and we're gonna, we said it earlier, we're gonna discover that there are newer and better ways to do business. I had a wonderful conversation. I wanna say it was on Tuesday or Monday of last week in one of our training, uh, training classes that we were doing as a part of this. I talked to Alexis uh, Weiland and she's in San Antonio. She's been doing virtual buyer appointments um, for years because she handles a lot of relocation. And she just told me, oh yeah, I get on a Zoom, fill in the blank, Google Hangouts, whatever the, the, the video player is of your choice. And she would even have her new team members shadow her. They would just be like a camera in the room. Hello, Mr. You know, Buyer, I want to introduce you to James. He's on my team. He's going to be learning from this. I hope you don't mind. No one ever does. So she's been doing exactly what you've been talking about for three years. So we just are now out of necessity having to discover some things that are already possible and work at a really high level and actually maybe more effective and more efficient than what we were doing. Well, it's so funny you say that because Monica Reynolds, who you know is heavily involved in our coaching division, said that she almost never went to the house for a listing appointment. Now, you're, we're talking in the, the 80s and 90s, right, Jay, that, that Monica was going then. I'm not even going in the houses then. So this, the idea of doing this is not new. We're gonna have to get creative. And quite frankly, we have better technology to be able to pull it off now than we did even three or four years ago. That's Except right. That's it's, right. I'm sorry, say it again. I, I was just agreeing with you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Well, I like that. The, the, the thing about it is we're really just talking about doing the basics. You just might, the system that you use or the tool, I guess is a better word, the tool that you use to implement the basics may change. The basics don't change. No, they almost never do. I think whenever times are really good, we get to have the freedom to experiment. And we might be succeeding in spite of ourselves in those moments. 
but the things that truly make us all successful are a handful of things that if they're done well and effectively, the business will flourish, right? And most of the 12 tactics are around those fundamentals, right? It's around the core fundamentals that make a business healthy in good times or bad, and this is a great time to remind ourselves of that. I love that you said fundamentals, which is something you say in the book. I, I know sometimes I'll coach people and they'll go, James, why are we talking about the basics? I don't want to do the basics. So I heard from Gary one time, just call them fundamentals. It means the same thing. And everyone's like, yeah, I want to do the fundamentals. So <laughs> they're going to the fundamentals and you'll succeed in this market. People are still going to buy and sell real estate, right? Yep, they will. And um, just as a pro tip, this is something I learned from my wife this morning. I didn't know this because we were doing our walk. Um, when I was saying earlier that she texted all of those people, this is just a fun way to be, again, tech tools make us more effective. If on your phone, if you type in TY, we all know what happens, right? It'll autofill to thank you. There's a setting on your phone where you can create shortcuts to write long things. So she created one that was just V1. It's her, it's a script that she was using on how are you? And then she types the letters V and the number one, it filled in a whole paragraph for her. And then she could personalize it to think James V1, and then asked another question. And she was able to reach close to 50 people yesterday through text messages because she leveraged a tool that maybe we hadn't been leveraging as well before so that she could do it at a higher level. Opportunity right now. Well, and you told me that they were happy to hear from her. I mean, these were not unwelcome text messages. No, I, everyone has questions right now. The I mean, we went from zero to 35,000 in this group in a matter of days because Everyone has questions right now. As realtors, we have an opportunity to be the provider of the best answers, especially about local real estate. What does this mean for your community, for your neighborhood, for the house that you sold them last year? Um, are we talking to them about the ability to refinance right now? Do we have investors that should maybe be looking at cash out refis because interest rates are low and they could actually you know, be able to, to, to get some dry powder to get them through this. There's lots of options that only we can give them really good answers on and great advice, and that's our job. Reach out, find out how we can help them, whether it be paper towels from the office depot instead of the grocery store, or how to refinance their mortgage, we can become a trusted source of answers for them now. Well, that's being the local economist of choice, which you and Gary talk about in the book, and we're gonna hear later on in a, a book club session about, and, and here's what I'm getting from our conversation today, and it's a line from the book. It says, when you know what to do, it's time to move from inspiration to perspiration. And you know, our, our, our morning calls that we do at 8 a.m. on this page, you know, one of my goals is, yes, we're gonna give you some inspiration and then get you to work. Um, how important is it that, yes, the mindset's gotta be right and you must take action, folks? It's huge. It's huge. And I think that if our mindset isn't on right, right, if we've seen it, you see it with your kids, they're willing to do it, but they're only half-heartedly doing it. We can see it in their body language. We can hear it in their voices. We need to, to say our affirmations, whatever it is. And, and it can be really simple. It might not be that I'm going to sell 10 houses this month. It can be I'm going to provide 10 great answers for my customers this month. You have a reason to be doing this. Um, the outcomes may take longer and we may have to work harder for them, but the activities matter a lot and we can make a difference. We need to focus on that right now. Well, and the bold law that matters for, for you know, many of you familiar with bold, I think it's focus on the plan, not the problem. You know, what changes and shifts are you going to make in the way you're running your business so that you can still succeed? Because anybody can, not everybody will, and you might as well be one of them. Jay, we've covered this here. I mean, we've gone through this section. What did, what did I miss? What didn't I ask about? Or what is it that we got to make sure we cover? And then you can, in the Facebook page, write some questions that Jay can answer or I can help answer. Jay, what did we miss? Or what do we want to make sure people get? Well, I think we just recapped it. Um, understand that the market has shifted. They, they are just now calling it a recession. We knew that beforehand. A lot of times, those of us on the front lines of real estate see it long before the lagging indicators are reported in our local newspapers. Um, we have the ability now to put on a new mindset, one that even as tough as this is going to be, that there will be opportunity if we're committed to choosing to do the right things, right? We have the opportunity to choose to be successful. Yes, we may make less money. It will be tougher. We're working with our kids 
and our dog and our spouses around us, but that doesn't mean it's not possible. What's possible for us is what we choose. We have to focus on that and get into action. And it's very clear. It's lead gen and lead conversion first. And when we have those problems solved, we can start solving a lot of the other ones in our business. Yeah, it's smart. You guys actually talk about how shifts happen earlier on in the book, page 10 and 11. And you, you, you say they're gradual and then sudden, right? So a, a, a national shift happens over a long period of time, which is what you're talking about. You and Gary, to be fair, have told us at Family Reunion for two or three years that this is coming. I, I remember being there in 2019, and Gary said, if you're waiting for the recovery, it's already happened, right? That's what you taught us. So we knew this was coming. And then a local shift can happen very quickly that, hey, if, you're, if your governor closes down the state and says you can't go do anything, well, there, that's a shift right there that you've got to figure out how to address pretty quickly. So, uh, yeah, just keeping that in mind that it's gradual and then it can happen pretty fast, too. Yep, and it's like a golf swing, right? At the top of the swing, it almost comes to a stop and it gets faster as we go through it. That's what it always feels like. And we're probably going to have a few of those, right? Things will change again. And then things will change again. And then we'll have a sense, really clarity about how we navigate this. You shared your market. I know that we were looking this last weekend. And I think over the last you know, few weeks, and I'm going to get slightly off, something like 1,100 homes went on the market and just under 11 homes sold, 100, 100 homes sold. So in some markets, you're hearing this and you're looking at your stats going, why are we on this call? It, it hasn't happened yet. Well, that's your opportunity. You're ahead of the curve. You can be going in and doing these activities before everyone else has realized this has happened. You can be first and you can actually get some of those first rewards, not the leftovers. So the Austin numbers are almost identical with the Tampa Bay numbers. I was talking to people in Raleigh today. Their numbers are right there. And, and when I hear that, I go, great. That's awesome. Totally great. It also doesn't mean that the market isn't changing. No. And so if you act and behave as you always have, you know, we have this bold law, Jay, that says do what you've always done and you'll get what you've always gotten. And, and I'd like permission to amend that right now. And that is if you do what you've always done, you may only get half of what you've gotten. Mm -hmm. And that if you want to get what you've always gotten, you've got to do double of what you've always done. So the, the closings you see happening in your market this week, that's stuff from December and January and February. Yeah. So the listings that you put on the market this week, those are from conversations you had in December and January and February. So let's not have a false sense of everything's great. And I promise you, as you said, you will never log in to the MLS ever, and the number will never be zero. There will always be a new listing that goes on. There will always be stuff that goes under contract, right? That's right. Um, we have a question. Well, it says, oh, that's right. It's from our team. How should we handle photography on new listings? I'll give the answer that I heard last week. Um, I was talking to some folks that were already in a shelter in place that did not allow for even one person to go into the house if it wasn't vacant. And they're literally coaching their sellers on how to do it. And they're having to post in the remarks because of the extraordinary circumstances. This is what we're doing. And here's the reality. Are they the best photos ever? Did they have a professional you know, camera at home? They didn't, but they were able to get it done. The woman I talked to, the, they ended up having a GoPro at the house and that actually did better pictures than their camera. And so they just talked through it and they had to take a lot more pictures and the realtor had to go through a lot more to get the right ones, but they were still able to get it done and they just had to do it differently. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly how it would work. They, they have a camera, they can take the pictures. Um, somebody says, how do you handle condition for pricing with a virtual listing? What would you say to that? Um, same thing. I've actually heard of people doing virtual walkthroughs, either themselves or having the, the client essentially FaceTime them on their phone, whatever the app is that you use, right? Just do the video talk, have them walk around and direct the camera. And you can do virtual staging that way. You can get a check on the virtual condition of the home. The one thing in some markets that's unclear, and I would just caution you, follow the local guidelines that your broker's giving you. In some places, it's still not okay to have a home inspector go on site. So that is different banks are weighing in on that this week. Hopefully we'll have clarity soon about how that happens, but you can still do virtual walkthroughs to get a sense of the condition of the property. Yeah, and that's why you gotta to talk to your local leadership to help you. 
And then the last question we have popped up is economists are calling it a recession and yet it doesn't feel like one right now because we've kind of hit this pause button. So what can we expect uh, the pain points that we can get out in front of? And well, we talked about that a little bit that this is what, you know, in the last week, we've really seen things start to move and we just may not feel that for a little bit. Um, I think that no one has a crystal ball. Um, I don't know about you, but I've been watching China, Italy, now Spain, like anyone, it, this moved from east to west. And so we do have limited information on what happened. And I'm trying to pay attention to those things. But I would say focus on converting the leads you have, right? Because we don't know what it'll be like in 90 days. We can only, like, I, we literally got our team together, James, and said, let's do a 90-day business plan. Let's do a 30-day business plan. Because that feels like a period of time where we have some knowledge that's likely to stick. If we're talking about September and August, who knows what it'll be like, but we can have relative surety around what's happening now, and we can plan for that. Let's do our best. Yeah, let's get through the next 30 days, right? That's what we're saying here, because they're going to reevaluate school on April 15th. I just want to survive until then. <laughs> Gary always said it, right? He said it for the last... We've been, we just came out of an 11 to 12 year recovery. It was one of the longest times without a recession. And typically these things show up every seven to 10 years. So it's very unexpected. And Gary said it every year from stage, folks, it's coming. We don't know when, but it's coming. That's just cycles happen. Make hay while the sun shines. Yeah. Right now we all may have a 30 to 45 day window to make hay while the sun shines. So let's put some hay in the barn right now. Well, and smile and dial and talk to our people. And for the record, Gary said the same thing in 2005. And, you know, some of us didn't listen to him then either. And we paid that. The last question popped up, Jay, I see is what are we grateful for? I'll tell you, let me just tell you first. I'm grateful that we have this now because in 2009, you know, we, well, you came out in 09. So in 07 and 08, we didn't have it. And now we have the model. And and you say that we can learn from you know, history repeats itself and, and we can win if we learn from it. And we've got it right here. I'm grateful for this and I'm grateful for the ability to connect with our people. I love it. Um, I'm grateful for everyone who invested in themselves to be on this call and trusted James and I to hopefully, hopefully gave you at least one thing that you can go take action on today. Um, I'm grateful for the numbers of people that are coming from curiosity and asking. Um, I don't know the answers, but I'm willing to ask. Um, it takes some humility. Um, we all thought that maybe we knew all the answers as little as 90 days ago, and that's all changing. So I'm thankful for everyone on this call who is curious and trying to find the answers because we are helping people with their most valuable asset. We have a really sacred mission to help people with their shelter. Um, I take that very seriously. And I also love supporting small business owners, which is our industry is full of independent contractors and small business owners. So we have an opportunity right now, a mission moment to help people when they need it most. We'll be talking to our grandkids about this, folks. So it's time to step up, get our heads on right, and get into action. Yeah, it is. And that's why we're doing this. So Jay, we continue this on Thursday, uh, same time, same place. And we're going to talk about... Um, we're going to talk about expenses because that's a big one. And you guys say you can't revenue your way out of it fast enough. You've got to cut, 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 right? Yeah, I would encourage everyone who's got the book um, who can. I know that Amazon is not actually shipping right now. They told us that for the next few weeks they're focused on household goods and medical supplies. And you know what? They have their priorities, and I respect that. But you can get a digital copy, whatever you need. The expense management chapter that you'll be covering we think with jason on thursday james you'll be back is one of the most important things that you can be doing after you lead generate and lead convert it's how we find our margin so definitely read that chapter um go watch videos if you can find them be prepared take notes this is a really actionable chapter um i can't wait to see it and james again thanks again for being our host on this hey my pleasure thanks for me do it and of course don't forget you can all join us 8 a.m. Eastern, right here in the Facebook page. We do that call. We live stream it just like this, or it's on the Zoom, just to give you that little bit of inspiration before you go get into your perspiration. There you go. James, thanks a lot. Thanks, everybody. Um, we'll drop in. If we didn't get your questions, we'll try to drop into the Facebook and answer them soon. Thanks, JC. Thanks, y'all.
Okay, guys, go ahead and start up your uh, videos, if you will. Awesome, and take yourselves off mute. Good to see everybody. So what did you think? Did we get some good stuff out of that today? Oops. Definitely. Sorry. Yeah. He was in shock because it felt like he was exposing me. So what happened? Oh my God. God. Well, I'm going to go into detail. We discovered that Gavin allegedly had a three-year affair with their manny. Oh my. <laughs> oh my. What am I doing right now? <laughs> I am so sorry about that. Well, you know, we had to have a laugh for a class. <laughs> okay, so we have just a couple of minutes. Um, what was your biggest takeaway? If you had one big takeaway, what was it today? Mindset. Mindset. Tell us more about that, Lori. Got to get it right. Yep. <laughs> get real, get right. Mm -hmm. And it changes from minute to minute. <laughs> it kind of is right now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Trish? Yep. Crazy. Um, I think one of the things that I'm trying to do is think about positioning myself. So I'm trying to position myself as a contributor to my community. I'm not having it all about real estate, but also contributing and answering questions about real estate, calling your database. Because what I want when this is all over is I still want to be on top of mind. Yep. So yep. a lot of people will reach out to other people. A lot of people are just going to sequester in and, and not kind of reach out. But if you're the one reaching out, if you're the one that's kind of doing the fun videos, you know, um, making them laugh during the day, they're going to kind of remember those things and, you know, hopefully pass on those funny videos. Again, like I said, not all minor real estate. I just want to be the first person on the mind when it comes to real estate later on. I like it. I like it. Okay. So we just have a couple minutes and I know that one of the ideas on there was the text uh, replacement. Who has an iPhone? I do. I do. Who does not have an iPhone? I have Android. Okay. So I know how to do it on iPhone. Here's the one I'm thinking I'm going to do for Android. If you go to YouTube and you simply type in text replacement on Android, it should teach you how to do it, but I'm going to show you how to do it on iPhone. So if you got an iPhone, follow along. You're going to go to your, can we see it that way? Can we see settings? To, there we go. See settings. And then I'm going to go to general. Okay. Everybody there with me? Once you get to general, go down to keyboard. With me so far? Yep. And then once you're on keyboard, you're going to see this thing says text replacement. And at the very top right hand side of your screen, you see a little plus sign. Plus there, you can type in your phrase and then you can do your shortcut. So they said like V1 was hers. Um, so if you guys want to play with it for a second, maybe let's just do, I'm just going to go DF is going to be my um, shortcut. And my phrase is going to be test, test. And then I hit save. Right? So if I go over to my text messages now, and I put in DF, and I hit space, it put in test, test for me. Did you see how that worked? Yeah. Were you able to put a space in between test, test? Uh, yes, I did. You can. Okay. Okay. It you can actually said I couldn't do. Yeah. You should be able to type out like an entire paragraph. I've got a couple of them in mine. Okay. Okay. So, and I love that reconnection because basically what you do in the text, you go, Hey, Josh, DF, and it goes, and it has the, you know, thing, the whole paragraph. So you can personalize it at first and then it just says everything in it, which I love. So is that helpful? So a couple yes. of the things that I heard real quick, and then I'm going to let you guys go running a little bit over here. It's um, really teaching sellers how to do videos. Um, mm -hmm. I do want to teach you something, um, that, a, a way to communicate with your sellers, by the way. Uh, for example, I know I've got iPhone, Trish, you've got Android. There's an app called Duo, D-U-O, Duo, yeah. that when you both have that on your phones, you can talk just like it's FaceTime. 
or just like it's Skype, it's really good with clients. And so you can actually have them walk through the house and then you can teach them how to do the video. Do they have to have duo too? They both, yeah. have, they both have to have duo. Yeah, so it's the app that you basically share together. Um, then the, I love the idea of the 30 day business plan. I'm actually gonna explore that a little bit because I think that'd be good for one of our business meetings to talk about that. So I'm gonna talk to Pam about that a little bit. Uh, and then um, expenses, expenses slash expenses. So they're gonna talk about that tomorrow. So here's what I'm gonna do is they will post that, um, that uh, class again tomorrow morning. I'm gonna do just like we did today. Was this helpful? Did this work? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing tomorrow from what they did. So I think there's a lot of good content and we'll just keep this going. I really like it. Um, we may end up kind of moving it to its own day so we just do it every day. Would that be helpful instead? Because I do want other classes to come in, but I think this is important. What do you think? Yeah, agreed. Okay, good. I will work on that for us. We'll go from there. All right, any final words before we hop off here, guys? No. Have a good right. No, thanks for doing this. Hey, you bet. Yeah, thank guys. you. You bet. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay active, please. All right, guys, I'll see y'all later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.